Hey, Mount Hood Territory, it's spring. It's our favorite time of year. Why? Because it's time for the annual Wooden Shoe Tulip Festival. I'm out here. Well, I'm not really tiptoeing through the tulips because I'd probably trip and fall and mess up the tulips. And we like to keep them nice for everybody else. But it's awesome spring day. We're really looking forward to some beautiful weather. And the tulips are really starting to pop out here. But one of the best things about the Tulip Festival out here in Woodburn is not just the acres and acres of beautiful tulips and the gorgeous views. It's the fact there's so much other stuff going on. And I'm joined by Nels here. He's probably got one of the coolest things to see and do at the Wooden Shoe Tulip Festival. What would a Wooden Shoe Tulip Festival be without actual wooden shoes? Nels here has the awesome job of actually making these shoes. And it's a pretty cool process. Nels, thanks for coming on with us today. You're welcome. So this is something that you took up uh, 25 years ago. First, it's something just to kind of like, you know, bring it home to the festival, but it's become something that you really thoroughly enjoy. I've kind of transformed it into a hobby for me. So I carve shoes mostly year round now, rather than just at the festival. And now the cool thing is here, this isn't just something he makes. Take a look at that footwear. He's got his own wooden, I mean, he's wearing wooden shoes. Now, I predict, give it five more years, Nike will be coming out with something like that. So if any Nike execs are watching, here's your next inspiration for design. You can see how it's made. So how, do, how does it start? It starts with a, a round, and you start it, and you split it. Just beat it like it owes you money. Yep. And then uh, quarter it. And All after right. you quarter it, you bring it over, and you start to shape it. Now, what kind of wood is this? This is poplar. That's a traditional wood. Okay. So it's it, something a little softer, obviously. It's you don't soft, want it. Yeah. And then it uh, cuts easy, and then it dries hard. And then you just start to shape it, and what? you keep working on it. What is this thing it. called? This is called a block knife. Okay. Would you like to try this? Oh, this is dangerous. Let's watch the lefty try to sever something. It's a right-handed knife. Yeah, and I'm a left-handed person. <laughs> yeah. So I just kind of, whoop, I took nothing. You're doing well. Oh, this ain't bad. Whoop, I didn't get anything. Okay, it takes you, as I heard, as we were talking before, it takes you on a shoe like this a couple hours to make, right? A uh, shoe this size, probably an hour and a half. I think, uh, repair. I think at the way I'm going here, we're looking at like about a week and a half for me to make this at, at, at this thing. I'm, I'm afraid to take too much. Oh, don't worry about it. Well, that's, that's really cool, though. All right, I'm going to put this down before I, I hurt something, like and a shoe or you know, a finger. you have it shaped, you bring it over and put it in the, the blocks, and then you start to dig them out. And you start with a small spoon, and you start in the heel. Now, this is one of the really cool things about this whole process is, I mean, you've got these, you know, authentic shoes. I mean, you learned to, you learned this craft from somebody who learned it from Holland. So, I mean, we're taking authentic, you know, wooden shoes. Would you and like we're using, to try? I'll try this. And, and you're making, you know, with authentic hand tools. All this stuff is, you know, no automation, no... I can't talk and do this at the same time. It actually takes a little bit of effort. Um, but no automation, all authentic. And these are actually like antique hand tools, right? That is correct. You start with a small one, and then you get that out, and you move to a bigger one and a bigger shoe. The problem is when it cuts easy, Oop. you're about where you need to be. Oh, well, there we go. I guess I need to change that. So now just try that one. Now okay. it'll cut out real easy. Oh yeah, look see, at that. See how easy that is? And again, because this is popular, I mean, if you're doing this yep. oak, you'd be like, right. but you'd be huge. You'd just be rent. <laughs> <laughs> okay, now let's move to this one. Switch. You might have to just be real easy with it, Ginger. Oh, okay. I'm like trying to force it. Yep. Because you'll split that out. Oh, yeah. We don't want to do that. It's like I'm drilling for oil here. Now, one of the really cool things is, I mean, you've got shoes of all sizes. I mean, obviously, again, you've got shoes that you're wearing here. Mm -hmm. These are kind of smaller. And we've got some other um, shoes that you've made here, kind of range, again, showing the size range. So if Molly can kind of show these off. Now these are things that people can purchase here at the festival, correct? That is correct. So how much how much does it cost for kind of, as we go through the range of sizes here? Uh, the little ones are four, and then they just graduate up, and I think these are about fifteen. And so like somebody could like take these home, they could paint them up or paint whatever, them up yeah. and make them look nice. Now one of the cool things I've seen is people actually kind of use these as little planters. 
they use planters. If you're going to use it as a planter, you need to drill a hole in to let the water out. Oh, that helps. Or they use these to hang on the Christmas tree. Oh, now that'd be a perfect Christmas ornament. My daughter. Bring a little spring to Christmas. My daughter decorated her Christmas tree last year with shoes. <laughs> I like it. So, I mean, this again, you've been doing this for 25 years. And, and here's the thing. He hasn't cut himself making the shoes. I, I was terrified of doing that as like right now. But I mean, I think that makes you qualifies you as a pro. So uh, when are you out here making the shoes? When can people come out and see this? Uh, generally on the weekends. On the weekends, okay. Uh, is when I'm out or on very busy days. On very busy days, which is we're coming up. We're coming up on Pete Color here in another couple weeks or another week, I think maybe. So check out. You're going to see Nell's out here making some wood shoes. And that's then, awesome. And then if it's true, if you've done it right. <laughs> That tells you how wet the shoe is. <laughs> <laughs> On that note, folks, I was not <laughs> expecting that one. Thank God that was water from the wood and not spit. All right. <laughs> One of the other great things that's going on here at the Wooden Shoe Tulip Festival is, I mean, it's such a great farm. There's all kinds of uh, awesome stuff happening here. Kind of, if you're an agritourism geek like we are at Mount Hood Territory, you see all the great stuff they do. It's not just flowers on display, but the fact they grow all stuff. There are vineyard and winemakers here too. So in a second, we're going to meet up with Barb. She kind of runs the show here, and she's going to show us a couple of the great wines that they make right here. So hold on, we're going to be right back. All right, thanks for uh, sticking around. Now we're over here with Barb Iverson. Uh, Barb is kind of like, I guess we can call you the matriarch now uh, of oh, all that we see here. That makes me sound old. No, it doesn't make you sound old. It makes you sound like you're in charge and you run uh. stuff. Um, I mean, this is a huge operation at Wooden Shoe. There's a lot going on. This is our 34th year. So, you know, over the years we've grown, there's food, there's kids' activities, there's, there's lots of stuff. We've learned a lot in that time. And, and it's one of, the, one of the favorite things. I mean, yeah, I love the tulips. I love the wine. I love everything. But I love coming here. I'm like... <laughs> Oh, fair food. I mean, there's just <laughs> nothing like that smell of fair food that just, you know, I'm like, I'll check out the tulips in a second. I'm getting some elephant ears and some, you know, sausage and peppers. Yeah. But, but you know, we talked about the wine. Uh, this is something that you guys started, what, about four or five years ago now? No, 2009, we planted the vineyard. Wow, in 2013, okay. we started our first, we had our first wine. Well, that's five years since yeah, you so had the wine. Yeah, so pretty close. Yeah, yeah. I, I got yeah, that. Pretty close. Close so, enough. And, and we went with varieties that were a little bit different. You know, there's a lot of Pinot Noir in the valley, so we put, we did plant a vineyard of that, or you know, some, some you, of you those You got to do it. But we had some other things we wanted to try yeah. as well. And that, and that actually, she went right where I wanted to go. I mean, you can tell that she does this stuff, you know, well, because you know, there's a lot of varieties here that I mean, I was not even familiar with, like Marichal Foch, which which you introduced me to at a at a tasting and quickly became like one of my favorite wines. It's a great wine. It's a heavier wine. It's a, it's a, it's a, a dark wine. So, you know, you pour it in a glass, you can't even, you can't even see through. <laughs> and uh, a lot of people really enjoy that. I don't know if we're doing this backwards, but nope, we're going to nope, start this works, with the, yeah. we'll start with the red and then you well, can Well, I'm, I'm always happy to go with red. Since you went there. Yeah. But as, as you said, I mean, now this is a state grown stuff. Yes. So it's grown here on the farm. I mean, look at that, you know, it just really just. It's a nice wine. And I mean, and yeah, oh, I mean, you can just talk about a fruit forward wine. Yeah, still my favorite. I love this. I mean, this it's is good. just, it's bold and, you know, again, very fruit forward, not too much tannins, just right amount yeah. that just kind of just gives you that nice little, you know, mm -hmm. this is good stuff. However, we've got Easter coming up. Easter, yes. Easter. Yes. Okay. So one of the things we have here on the farm is a wine wagon farm tour where we take you around and show you a hazelnut orchard. We show you our vineyard. Uh, we show you our, our event garden where we do weddings and things like okay. that. But on that ride, we use these sippy cups. So you don't spill the wine. I love this. And with, this is with, still the best thing ever. With Easter coming up, blushing, uh, the sparkling blush Moscato. Okay. It's great with ham. It's a Ooh, little sweet yeah. wine. It's a sparkling wine. Uh, really refreshing. It's, it's my favorite. Um, now, honestly, this, I mean, you guys are known for great ideas. Everything you do here is awesome. This thing may be the best idea in all of great ideas. I probably need this in my. Good. Yeah, <laughs> I get really nervous, but yeah, it's fine. But I'll, I just need this in my life in general, just being a klutzy guy in general. So I just but try that. Try that wine. Ooh, oh, you're right. Uh, you know, you know what I see. This is like perfect, like on a warm summer day. Summer day, actually, and, it's perfect anytime. Yeah, well, yeah, good point. But one of those like, it's it's like it a is. refreshing wine. It really is. But now I think I, I know what I'm going to have with my ham on, yeah, on Easter right. Sunday. Hmm. You guys keep rolling. I'm just going to drink this. <laughs> okay. But, you know, we've talked about the wine. Nell showed us the wooden shoe making. 
but we got to talk about tulips. Oh, I mean, of obviously, course. That, that, that's, that's why you're. That's actually why you're yes, here. Yes, that is why I'm here. But I mean, the, the tulips are 34 years. This is something that you know started as, oh, what the heck? We'll open the fields and people may show up, and Pretty, now people come. It really come. did. They, they they come. We've added things. So you know, that first year we went out and picked tulips right out of the field and sold them for a dollar bunch, <laughs> and we had nothing else really out there. And it's just every idea we have, it's like, well, let's try this or let's try that. You know, wooden shoemaker, we we brought a guy in from Canada. To Wouldn't you want to see that? Yes, exactly. Ah, and taught yeah. classes. And, and we've grown from there. You know, the cow trains, the kids' activities. You know, the kids obviously enjoy coming out here and just getting out in the open, enjoying the, the fresh air. Um, and then, of course, there's the color, the vivid colors, which, you know, photographers from all over the world, it's just great. And now, how many acres of tulips are there? So there's about 35 this year, uh, 35 wow. acres. And um, they've started to bloom. We're a little bit late this year. So yeah, the, the, season. yeah. We went, winter kind of keeps going. You're over. No, no, I'm not. So yeah. it delays things. So if you haven't planned your trip yet, you still have time for peak color. Oh, there's the absolutely. bright side. Yep. Yeah, there's yep. the bright We're side. About ten days. It depends what you know. It's just gonna turn around, be nice, warm up. Yeah. And then you know the seventh, that, about the second week of April will be great color. Yeah, it's kind of it's kind of hard to say when exactly spring's gonna come mm -hmm. and everything, but um, now how many different varieties of tulips are there? Because I see. Oh, all sorts of different colors and mixes of there's colors. There's thousands. Um, in, it, we probably have 120 in the field. Wow. Our catalog, which. And that, that would. See, see, there she goes. She knows my segues. <laughs> I do. So, so we actually plant a display garden, right? Or display beds with all the varieties that are in our catalog. And it's out located by our windmill. Okay. So if you go out by the windmill, that's another iconic thing that you take, you know, get, get your picture taken in front of it in big, giant wooden shoes, which is perfect. And yes. out there, you'll see all the different varieties we have. Then you can choose them. So instead of just looking in the catalog, you can order here, um, and it's it's absolutely stunning. And you can bring a little slice of the Wooden Shoe Tulip Festival home. That's right. It's it's a perfect way to do it, and maybe a bottle of wine too. Maybe a bottle of wine, but lots of memories too. Oh, I mean, there's she's just good. so there's, <laughs> well, there's so much to do and see out here. Yeah. You know, even if the tulips, you can get some great shots, but. If we're not in full bloom, there's plenty of things to do, and the kids will have a great time. And great kids' activities as well, you know, exactly. especially on the weekends. You know, we talk a lot about coming midweek, though, you know, just kind of avoid the crowds and the rush a little bit. And yeah, kind of earlier have the fields. in the day, yeah. late, 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 late on the day on weekends. But so tell everybody how to get here. So you can go to website, our website, woodenshoe.com. Um, it's probably the easiest way. We're located just east of Woodburn, or you can come south through Canby on Barlow Road. I'm going to try really hard to get this address right because I've answered the question about a thousand times. 33814. Three, South Meridian Road. It only took me two weeks of Googling it every time to get the answer every time somebody asked us. 33814 South Meridian Road in Woodburn. And you guys are open until April 29th. Exactly. So seriously, folks, no reason not to come out here yet. We're still waiting for peak color. So you got time to plan that trip. It's going to be awesome. Have some wine tasting if you're here without the kids. Yes. No kids today. Here. No kids. I'm going to enjoy this. I, I got to get this right again. The Sparkling blush Moscato. I'm going to enjoy this and plan my uh, Easter Sunday dinner. In the meantime, start planning your trip out here to the Wooden Shoe Tulip Farm. Hopefully we'll see you out here. I know I'm going to be coming out taking photos just about every day I can. It's going to be a beautiful time. So uh, we'll see you out here. And next time, join us when we're at the Willamette Ale House in West Lynn next week. We're talking to one of our newest business owners here in Mount Hood Territory. Until then, we'll see you next time. Thanks for joining us at the Mount Hood Territory's uh, live video at the Wooden Shoe Tulip Festival.